warning that went nowhere, a concern that came true and two lives taken. Now a man indicted for first degree murder in the Manatee County killing of his own mother and her boyfriend. Tonight, I team investigator Kylie McGivern speaks with the family who wants to prevent similar tragedies they say could have been avoided. We were constantly in fear. We got in the habit of double locking the door when we knew Tom was loose. We were terrified. Scared of 36 year old Thomas Matijic, Krista Kale's nephew. He has a history of mental illness. She had a no trespass order against him. We knew this was going to come if he was not behind bars. Kale says her family's warnings were not enough. I was not notified at all. I found out by the news. The sheriff's office just arrested a double homicide suspect. Matijic indicted on two counts of first degree murder accused of killing Patty Matijic and Sean Harrison, his mother and her boyfriend. In 2020, Matijic left Michigan and came to Florida. Within 24 hours of being here, he strangled Patty, put a pillow over her head, threatened to kill her, said, I hope you die. Court records of his arrest confirm Kale's account. Then in May 2023, Matijic was arrested again for attacking his mother and Sean. He kicked in the door knocked him to the ground, stomped on his head, and then um, he went after Patty. Court records say Matijic broke his mother's hip. The report notes Matijic poses an obvious danger to these victims. Kale found a letter Patty wrote to her son. It says, um, I love you and my heart is broken by what you did to me. I only want the best for you. Happiness, good luck, drug free and working. Kale says the family believed Matijic would remain in jail after he was charged with burglary with assault. I mean, it's listed as a life sentence. His mother didn't want him locked up for life. We did want him to get help. September 15th, Kale emailed an assistant state attorney asking, is it going to take Tom killing someone? Saying Patty and Sean were scared to death Tom would be released. We were never, ever updated. We were not notified that he was released. We were not notified that he was incompetent. Kale also contacted the I team, writing in this email September 18th, Tom is a danger to us, to himself, and the general public. Our state needs to take mental health more seriously before people like Tom kill someone. Court records reveal that during this time, Center Stone Behavioral Hospital and Addiction Center told the public defender's office they didn't know where Matijic was. Sarasota Jail released him. Less than two months later, his family's worst fears came true. I called them both. Both their phones were off. I immediately knew something was wrong. I opened my phone. I see a, a picture of Tom, his mugshot. A neighbor called 911. To think that what they went through when Tom walked in that door and what transpired and for a neighbor like this is two streets over hear her screaming. According to records, Matijic was court ordered to live at Mary Jennings group home as part of a conditional release. He showed up for several hours, but had left and never returned. Though he was deemed incompetent, the court order stated the defendant understands the conditions of the release listed and agrees to comply with them. Those conditions treatment for his mental illness, including taking medication and not using weapons. And it's very rare that that would happen. Felix Vega, a former state prosecutor, reviewed this case. Seeing that he was declared incompetent to stand trial, but then that he understood the terms of his release. What do you make of that? Most of my experience, people that are found incompetent and judge will issue an order and they will be sent to the Florida State Hospital for rehabilitation and they will be then evaluated again in six months. In a court order, the judge wrote the defendant does not meet the criteria for commitment to a treatment facility. The statute cited outlines one of the criteria as a substantial likelihood that in the near future, the defendant will inflict serious bodily harm on himself or another person. I spoke with state attorney Ed Bronski to give him and his office every opportunity to answer questions. He said ethically he cannot speak about a pending case. Patty's family is isn't holding Patty's back. Here. I want to make sure that like it says, this does not happen to anyone else's family. The whole thing is broken and they surely did not protect my sister and Sean. Tom should not be where he's at either. Tom should have gotten his help. That it all needs to be fixed. Like it says for the next family, we can't fix ours.
But how many more were before us? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to let it go. I don't care if it takes to my dying day. Matijic's arraignment is scheduled for December 15th. With photojournalist Randy Wright, I'm I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern taking action for you. And the I-Team did contact the public defender's office for comment on this. We have not yet heard back from them. Wendy?